So my number one is Before Sunrise. This is a movie from 1995. And the quick log line is, a young man and a woman meet on a train in Europe and wind up spending one evening together in Vienna. Unfortunately, both know that this will probably be the only night together, directed by Richard Linklater, starring Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. So this is sort of my like grand Hollywood, or sorry, cinematic, I should say, movie, romance movie, but it, it is about people talking and walking. <laughs> so no surprise. Yeah, it's like, you know, I was sort of pushing myself after I made the list. I should I have like a grand, I don't know, Casablanca like movie on my list. And I was like, it's just not me, you know. So this is as far as it gets. Like it is the biggest meet cute of all time, but it, it is about something very real um, of just people getting to know each other. And I think the way why this movie resonates with me very personally is when I wasn't in love, this is how I imagine myself falling in love with, that I would just hang out, meet with somebody and just walk around and get to know them. And then of course, as life went on, my best dates, whether they went somewhere or no, were just two people walking, us walking, that's it, you know? And now that I have been in a relationship, the best days that I have, the best days that we've had, They've been just us walking and getting to know each other, sometimes talking, sometimes arguing, sometimes sharing old stories, sometimes just being quiet, you know, and observing and taking the world and let that sort of wash over you, um, as opposed to the very carefully planned events or fancy restaurant trips, which can also be very nice. But I think to me, this is kind of real life in a way of just being with somebody. Um, so that's why this movie has always had a very personal connection with me. It's sort of my, you know, after a hard week, I want to feel cozy, but not in like a, you know, f weird, far from reality, fluffy way. Yeah, yeah. This is the movie I watch because it sort of brings me back to feeling good about mm -hmm. life, about the people you love and such. Um, so, that's sort of my personal connection with the movie. As far as the movie itself, like, again, this is probably one of my favorite directors, Richard Linklater. Again, there have been some misses here and there, but overall, there is nobody else who can make a movie like this, which is just about talking and mm -hmm. make it cinematic, make it feel grounded and real. But at the same time, you're totally leaned in. Nobody plays with time the way he does. And who knew, like, this movie would become a trilogy which, I mean, I almost thought of putting the entire trilogy as my number one, because it's sort <laughs> of a great piece in itself of like how this relationship unfolds and has such, so much depth in it. But I wanted to put this one because it's, this is where it all started. And this is what I, in my romantic and real head, I connect with this version of love the most. And, mm. and it says a lot of deep stuff about these two people. They're we've been talking a lot about the idea of love and lists and what, who is your person, right? I think this movie sort of really shows that where in many ways, Celine and Jesse are similar people. They care about art, they care about the meaning of life and such, but they're also at odds with each other. And there is this very healthy and sometimes unhealthy kind of back and forth power dynamic shift they mm -hmm. push each other's mm -hmm. buttons, but they also then you know renegotiate that contract back to love. Um, it's also this movie is about falling in love, so mm -hmm. you know flirting, showing your aspirational self first, but then getting sort of putting your foot in your mouth as you kind of go along. Right. And those proclamations that you made they come and sort of bite you back in the ass, but you're almost more adorable and lovable for that. So there's just so much going on in this movie. I could talk about this forever, but this is Before Sunrise, my number one. Yeah, I'm very glad you, you put this on the list. I had never seen this film before, um, preparing for this podcast. I'm not a big Richard Linklater fan. I, I like his more traditional, like a Days of Confusion School of Rock, but not necessarily this type of, of, uh, of what he does, like Slacker, that, that type of... Uh, 
his film. So I just hadn't seen this. Uh, it wasn't like I was avoiding it in particular, but I just had never seen this film. Um, so I'm really glad that I did here. And actually, I'm glad that I did now. I feel like if I had seen this when it came out, um, you know, mid 90s or even like when I was in college or something, I don't think I would have uh, enjoyed it or appreciated it in the way that, that I that I do now. I think, though, interestingly enough, it did in a way kind of transport me back to what it felt like to be in college and have these sort of like rambly conversations with someone where you both are so young, you don't know anything, but you're also at that age where you think you know everything. So you're just sort of like talking about all these gigantic topics like love and life, even though you barely lived and barely loved, but you feel like that's what I got from Ethan Hawke. Definitely like, Oh yeah, I, I was that guy. Like when I was 20 and 19, like having, making all these grandiose statements as if I knew anything, even though I knew nothing. Um, so it definitely transported you back to that in, in terms of the dialogue. But I think the, the, the conceit of what this movie does so well um, is because um, you know, they meet in a train randomly and they decide well, let's hang out for a day and then probably just never going to see each other again. It allows for both of them to let their guards totally down yeah. show every part of themselves because they know they're not going to get judgment because the person doesn't, who cares? Like this is a total stranger in the beginning. Right. And I think that is a very important um, aspect of love too, showing your entire full self, like your entire mm -hmm. self to this other person, not fearing judgment, not getting judgment, even like dumb little embarrassing things about yourself, the negative things, the, the, the great things, like you're not kind of putting on an act like yeah. Ethan Hawke, I don't think is really like trying to impress her. He's just like, look, I'll say anything because I don't care. Like who knows where this will go. And I think that really does capture a really important part of being in a relationship and being in love. And, and that you, you feel like you can, you feel like you can just say anything to this person. I mean, not because you feel like you're never going to see them again, but um, I think that using that um, uh, premise allows for this this relationship and this love to be expressed between these two people whereas if either of them came in with guards up because they had met you know at work and they know i'm gonna have to see this person every day so i can't really expose myself they probably never would have found each other at least as quickly um as, as they do in this film so i really liked that it touched on that aspect of what what love is a, a part, part of what love is which is that you know total freedom uh, and safeness to just like expose all these different parts of yourself um and like your inner child like there's a early on a scene where he does talk about this memory of, of him as a as a little boy and seeing maybe a ghost of his dead grandmother um and that she really latches on to that which also like a relationship is a lot about, um, you know, getting the needs of your inner child met and being um, open enough to expose that side of yourself to somebody, which is usually something you're trying to hide. Um, those childhood desires and, and, and fears and memories is not something you'd share with somebody. Um, but when you're in love, that's what you do share. And that's what the other person kind of falls in love with in a way too, um, that, that inner child, uh, of, of yourself. And, you know, I, you know, I definitely have not, I've not been in this situation before of, uh, you know, having a moment where like, I'm never going to see this person again. So I'm just going to say kind of, kind of whatever I want, but I definitely can say like, you know, relationships are getting to that point of where you do feel like you can expose, um, all these parts of yourself because you're not afraid about judgment because there is the, you know, there is that love that love there. So um, I do feel like I would not, because I've recently, as I've had, um, you know, more experience with love, realize these things that if I'd seen this movie when I was in college um, or at the time would have been like, this is just a bunch of like nothing. This isn't like, what, what is going on here? I wouldn't have understood that I, I think. Um, and uh, so I'm definitely glad in a way I, I waited and, and, and I did really enjoy the film actually. And I wanted to immediately go off and watch the other two, which I haven't yet, but I definitely will. Like I'm, it intrigued me enough to be like, I want to follow these characters and see kind of what else um, he's going to say with them uh, about what, what love is. But, you know, I think this film does a really good job of capturing that, um, that that moment yeah now i yeah i guess i was the weird child who sort of always sort of you know engaged like this so to me this spoke mm -hmm. to me even back then even though i had no idea about love or life or anything but it sort of felt like oh this is how i should be you know mm. i still there's something about ethan Hawke as pretentious and and sometimes annoying that can be but there's something about him that draws me in just the way he expresses himself, even in real life. And I think this movie obviously is a extension of, you know, him and her, uh, I think. Yeah. So, so yeah. And to your point of kind of letting the guard down for good or for bad, I feel like I've sort of let more of my guard down when I'm 
meeting people especially mm. in a romantic connection mm-hmm. like and i don't know if this is because this is what i took away from the movie of or this is just who i am so that sort of has felt pretty relevant to me even though there was no conceit or premise of like oh i'm never going to see this person again right i sort of want to get to the depth of who i am and who you are pretty quickly because otherwise i'm like why are we even here you mm. know it's sort of how i approach life and of course it's not always been you know very uh, nice to me <laughs> sure yeah seeing life that way but it's sort of you know it's it's funny you pointed that out uh, and it made me realize why i maybe love this movie because i actually do approach love and life like that have very few mm. guards up you know to my own fault so yeah cool yeah no uh, <laughs> when, when did you first see the movie by the way i'm just curious Or how did you see this? Not when it came out for sure. I think I watched it in the 2010s. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the other films had no there the second one had come out at that point but not the third. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And and the other two are are worth watching it sounds like then. Oh, they are amazing. In fact, yeah. a lot of people like the second one even better than the first one. Mm, okay. But they're all amazing and it's funny like the themes that we've been hitting through our list those three movies of the package will hit a lot of those because you really mm. see these people go through a journey. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Kron and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.